Let's say we have a metal, and it's a solid, solid state, and it goes to the aqueous state. Uh, let's say it's a plus one charge, so we have one electron. And then let's say we have another metal, it's in the aqueous state, we'll call that metal N, not nitrogen, just some metal. And let's say it's two plus, and we add two electrons to go to the solid metal state. So if we were balancing this, I'd multiply the top reaction by two, and we'd get two metal solids plus N, aqueous, two plus, goes to the M, aqueous, plus, oh, and there's two of those, and solid. Okay, let's say we have that reaction. Now let's look at what this reaction might actually look like if we drew it out. <clears throat> so let's draw this out. Let's say we have this happening in a beaker, and you'll actually do this in lab. And let's stick the metal in here. Let's do this for M. So this is M, this is a solid. And then we have M aqueous here in solution, M plus aqueous. What's happening in the top reaction, and for, for every full cycle of the overall reaction, we're having the metal go to metal aqueous, and that electron, I'll just draw it going this way, it goes somewhere. So we lose an electron, and, and we produce an M plus aqueous in solution from the solid bar that is sitting in the solution. Now this reaction would happen naturally, however, you're going to have a buildup of electrons. And when you have too many electrons nowhere to go, it's going to stop. And so what we're going to do, I'm also going to draw the other side of that diagram, the end part. Let me draw that. I guess I'll draw that right over here on the right. You're going to see what happens here. Let's put N solid. This, let's put a bar in a beaker, <coughs> solid N. And in that case, we've got this aqueous in solution, N2 plus, that is going on, or what's called plating on, to here. So if you've heard of like chrome plating or any sort of other plating, this is what happens. It goes from the aqueous solution onto another metal or itself. And in order to do this, we need some electrons available. However, there's not that many electrons just laying around ready to act. Uh, and because of that, uh, this reaction, which could happen naturally, will not either. So what we're going to do is we're going to put both of these half reactions together in what's called an electrochemical cell. We're going to put them together. And we're essentially going to make a battery. Okay? And we're going to cause the electrons to flow between, from one to the other. And when this one loses an electron, it'll pick up that same electron over here to react. So I'm going to draw an overall cell, or basically connect two half reactions or half cells. So these are half cells. To make uh, a, an electrochemical or galvanic cell. So I'm going to draw a little picture here. It's going to take me about a half a page. It's a pretty big one. So this is a galvanic or electrochemical cell. Okay. And it's I'm making it big with beakers, but it can be really tiny, or it can even be bigger than what I draw. So let's draw two beakers, like this, right next to each other. Okay. And um, let's put that metal bar back in each of them. Okay. And fill it with liquid. Okay, aqueous solution. And uh, so we've got M here, M solid, 
and this is n solid, so I'm putting these two together. Remember the n2 plus aqueous is plating on or, or going on to, this is a reactive, the n solid is a product. And it's the opposite with the m, the m it's coming off, going into solution, the m plus aqueous. Okay. That's probably unfortunate. All right. All right. This will be edited out also. Yeah. Okay, all disasters will be edited out. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. As if that didn't happen. So now, this is part two of the video. So now, uh, we want to take care of those electrons. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect a little wire here between them. And remember that the M part is losing electrons. So we're going to have electrons flow into this wire, just like a little current. Make a little current. And remember that N needs electrons. So the second part, we're going to have the electrons flow in this way. Okay? So it's flowing from one side to the other. We could actually measure this voltage here with a little voltmeter if we wanted to. And we're going to. So you'll see that. Okay, so that's connected by a little wire. Now what's going to happen, that would be cool and all, however, there's, there's still a problem. We're going to produce too, much, too many ions in solution here, and we're going to lose too many ions here. So there's going to be a net uh, accumulation of charge, and when there's too much charge built up, this is not going to continue. So we also have to not only deal with electrons, but also deal with the built-up charge here and the lost charge over here. So let's do that. How we deal with this is with what's called a salt bridge. So I'm going to draw, kind of. it looks like a wire, but I'm going to draw a lot thicker here. In lab often you might use a string or something to do this. And this is called a salt bridge. And it, it's made up of, say, some, some salt, obviously, because it's salt bridge. Let's say potassium, and I won't name the anion, some Kx, like potassium chloride usually works well. And that's aqueous. So we'll do a Kx, like potassium chloride is a common one. And what's going to happen, say on the right-hand side over here, you don't just have N, but you have like Nx2 because you need some counter ion here. But when the N2 plus plates on to the metal, you're going to have a lot of X left over. What happens to that X? Well, the K plus from the salt bridge travels this way. And the X minus that's left over travels up here, and they meet in harmony and love in the salt bridge, or somewhere in this direction. On the other side, the X minus from the salt bridge travels this way towards the left hand side and the metal, um, so this is made up of MX solution, but there's going to be a lot of extra M plus that goes up here and that M plus, the extra positive charge is going to meet this X minus over here. So that excess charge is taken care of in the salt bridge. And this is the galvanic electrochemical cell. You measure, you would measure right here voltage. And just to note that. Voltage V is a joule per coulomb. This is char a charge unit, and it's called a coulomb. And that measures what's called the cell voltage. 